So, you want to learn how to parachute down a rocky mountain in the Gulf of Mexico? Well, that's not going to happen because this is not a parachuting class. Hey guys, I'm Bethesda by Kai. I'm Kai. We're back today once again taking a look at how to make this cool, like, uh, like animation alerty looking thing. And I figured this is something a little different, even though like I love doing the animations, I love doing the motion graphics, you guys love that kind of thing, and so we're doing it again today. But I wanted to add a little twist on something that we haven't exactly covered, which is a specific uh, little step that we're going to be doing uh, today. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to drag a box over top of both the cube and the lamp, hit delete on my keyboard to get rid of that, we don't need it. Select our camera, hit Alt-G and alt r to clear the location and the rotation of the camera hit r x on your keyboard and then nine zero on your numpad and left click to confirm that movement and the rotation and then hit g y to move the camera backwards like that hit zero to go into the camera's view now with that done let's go ahead and uh hit shift a and we'll search we'll search for a uh plane right there boom hit r x 90 on your numpad so you can left click to confirm that and then now you can see that it's like standing up straight easy um now with that done i'm gonna s to scale it down just slightly um hit tab to go into the edit mode of this bad boy i'm gonna grab the top two vertices up here and this is gonna be the shape that i kind of want to create so i kind of want to uh i want to uh add a loop cut first of all so add, yeah, add loop cuts so this little button right here put a loop cut straight up and down in the center boom that's going to split this plane into half into two pieces so it's like two rectangles now like this like one two um now we're gonna go ahead and grab these three at the top so click and drag a box over those hit s to scale and then x to uh, scale them on the x axis like that now i'm gonna do something like this and what i want to do is uh we'll leave it like that for now i suppose we can go ahead and grab um we can go ahead and grab these two on this side so click and drag a box over top of those Hold down shift, click and drag a box over top of those. And now if we hit S, X, if we hit S, X, you can see it kind of scales, but you can see how it's kind of like scaling them and making them like sharper. So it's like pulling them out further, which is not really what I want. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to go ahead and oh, we can actually, we can do each of these individually. So let's go ahead and hit S, X, oh, not sorry, G, X, my fault, G, X. And then we can hit like one or actually negative one, sorry. Um, and spread that out like that. And then select these two and then hit S, x and then hit one on your numpad and then oh no s not s x s or g x sorry i'm all over the place today hit g to move and then x on your keyboard to move on the x axis so g once again to move and then x to lock it on the x axis only then on your numpad hit one and i can see it pushes it over there which is exactly what i want so at tab to go back out of edit mode you can see we had this cool little looking thing here i'm gonna open up the timeline a little bit change my start frame to zero um, put this on frame zero. Um, and now you can see what we're going to do here is I'm going to go to the shape keys tab, tab right here. And then go down to shape keys, which is right here. And this little plus button, like mm, maybe twice. Um, this little twice. And then we'll change this uh, one that says key one to uh, stretch, I guess, stretch like that. Nice. Um, with that done, what we need to do is I'm going to actually invert this. So we need to undo these little the, the the pull out thing we just did so we're going to undo this we're going to push these back in together so the way we're going to do that is we're going to do exactly what we just did but the opposite so hit g x and then hit one and then negative on your keyboard so the minus button like that actually we can do more than that so hit g x and then two and then ah, that's too far g x 1.5 negative there we go okay so i'm going to select these two hit g x and then 1.5 on your keyboard or your numpad, sorry. And then left click to confirm that. You can see we have something like this, which is pretty cool. Now, what I do want to do is I'm going to uh, maybe uh, we could scale them together like this, but it's going to make it stretch, which is not what I want. So let's go ahead and just leave it like that for now. Um, now, when we scale this stretch value, you can see that when it's on one, it's all the way like small. And then when it's on uh, zero, it's all the way open like it's supposed to be. So let's put it all the way up for now. Hit Shift A and we'll search for another plane. And then we'll make sure this plane's rotated by hitting RX90 on your numpad. Left click to confirm that. Then hit GY to move this bad boy up like that. There we go. Nice. Cool. Um, then hit S to scale this bad boy in about that big, just so it covers all of the um all the other little bit that we just made. Just so it covers all of that. Um, and now you can see. Um, if we were to scale this, you can see that you can now see it behind there. But what I want to do um, is I want to make it start off like this. 
and then when it scales out when the one and the one when the back scales out then we'll make the square in the front shrink so i'll show you what i mean here in a second so let's go ahead and select the piece in the back the one that you know we animated with the stretching um and we'll hover my cursor over top of the value input here and hit i on my keyboard hit i i'm gonna go to the main tab here um the second tab and change the frame rate from 24 to 60 so it's a little smoother you know nice and nice and nice and smooth go back to the shape keys tab and then go to about frame maybe frame 30 and put it to about point one like that hit i of your cursor on top of that hit i and then i'm gonna go to frame maybe 60 and then put it all the way to zero hit i there you go nice so when we play this you can see it does like this when we play this it does like this it zooms out there we go and i'm gonna actually pull this keyframe back by selecting it like this and hitting g once again g g is always the move key but like that so there we go now it looks nice and cool and it comes out like that which is sweet so now what we need to do is um, the reason we have this cube here is let's go ahead and do the materials real quick. So let's go to the material tab, hit this little new button, and we'll call this material, oh, we'll call this material holdout. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this from principal BSDF to the holdout shader, which is right there. There we go. Nice. So now let's go to the um, stretch thing in the back here. So the little stretch actual panel that we're making. Hit this little drop down, select material. And then let's go ahead and change this to uh, from principal BSDF to emission. And I'm gonna change this to a solid white color because I want it to just be white. Um, there we go. It looks good. I'm gonna go to the main tab, go to color management and change this from filmic to standard. Just turn that off real quick because it's annoying. And it makes it so that the colors aren't the actual colors of the scene. So like the whites will be a little tinted yellowish, like a sunset kind of thing or a sunrise kind of thing. It's just annoying. If you want it to be actual white, make sure you turn that color management off every time around so it'll look a little strange. So the difference is like this. So if it's if it's off, it looks like that. If it's on, yeah, it's like grayish, yellow tinted. It's it's just weird. So make sure it's on standard. Then the colors will actually be the colors that you choose. Um, nice. With that done, let's go ahead. And the last thing we need to do is go up to film, check transparent. And now you can see the background's transparent, but so is where the, the, the square is. So this is the holdout shader. This is what the holdout shader does. It makes it so it's transparent. Um, and you can see through wherever the you know, hold out shaders on top of, which is what you want. So let's go ahead and animate this now. So let's go from frame one, hit I, scale. And then on frame about 30, we'll scale it in a little bit like that and hit I, scale. And then on about frame 90, hit S, X, and then zero. S, X, zero to scale it all the way to zero. Hit I, scale. Now you can see when we play this, the cube is like that and gets smaller as it goes, which is really, really cool looking stuff. So it's like the two halves kind of connect, which is what I want. That looks really sweet. But um, but yeah, so that's that's how you do uh, that. Now, the last thing that I want to do is I'm going to reverse this animation. So it, I don't want to just pop away. So we're going to do the exact same thing, but in the opposite. So we're going to take this keyframe, whatever the last keyframe is, hit shift D, move it about there. Take the second to last, hit shift D, move it about there. Select the first one, hit shift D. Click and drag it all the way to the end, the last frame. We'll do the same thing with the um, holdout, uh, holdout piece that we made too. Grab this one, hit Shift D, duplicate this to about there. Grab this one, hit Shift D to move this about right there. And then grab this one, hit Shift D, move it about right there. So now when we play this, you can see what happens here. Is essentially it comes out, woo, it's looking cool, and then it goes away. Really sweet stuff. So that is literally all that it uh, all that it takes. You can add some bloom if you wanted some bloom. So radius, intensity. You know, so it's blooming now. It's a little bit of bloom on there. Um, I wouldn't recommend that though, because because it's transparent and it might look a little strange. Um, but yeah. So that is basically how you do that. It is really really simple, really cool. And I just wanted to make something where we kind of animated uh, a holdout a holdout um, shape, and we also animated with shape keys. Um, not stretching the, um, not stretching the, the actual plane that we have here, because you, if you notice these lines to the same angle the whole time, where if we were to do it like this real quick before we end the tutorial, if we were to do it like this, um, and we were to scale it inwards like this, you can see how the, the edges, the lines, they're changing angles if we scale like that. So that's why this is a little more special. That's why I wanted to cover this because they don't change shape like that because I don't, I don't like the way that looks it looks like it's stretching you know but this way you can see down here they stay the same angle the whole time instead of looking like this 
So when they go in, they don't go like that, and they don't go out like that. So it, it doesn't it doesn't get sharper or or you know flatter the the yeah further out it gets. So that's all that I really wanted to cover. Hope you ladies and gentlemen learned something new today about maybe shape keys, about holdout shaders. I'll see you in the next one. Happy 2023, by the way. Um, thank you for all the love and support on all the videos and all that kind of stuff. You know the vibes. Love you guys. Uh, take care in 2023. Uh, chase your goals. Do stuff. You know, inspiration. Um, I will see you in the next one. But until then, bye bye.